In the last class, we have finished with the ER diagram, so ER model, on the diagram, that is the ER model, what is, the, what is the meaning of ER model, why it is very beneficial, how it is used. So now, today's topic is ER diagram, that is how to make the ER diagram, in a, yeah, in a practical approach, how to make the ER diagrams, that is the entity relationship diagrams, but the logic theory is same, what is the entity, what is the relationship, that is everything is same. Let's start with the ER diagram. So ER diagram can express the overall logical structure of the database graphically and these diagrams are simple and clear qualities that may well account in large part of the widespread use of the ER model. Now what is the basic structure that consists of the following major components. One is the <coughs> instructor, one is the student. Now instructor advise, advise, advise the student. That means there is an advisor relationship between the instructor and the student. So there is the ID. Then uh, name, salary, there are three parts. And then the student ID, name, total credit. There are three attributes for this. Then the tangles are divided into two parts. Represents the entities, right? So instructor and the student both are the entity. The first part, which is in this textbook, is shaded blue, contains the name of the entity sets. The second part contains the name of all the attributes. For example, if I'm talking about the instructor, this is the name of the entity, and these are the attributes of this entity. This is the entity, these are the attributes of this entity. This is the instructor, this is the student, ID name, salary, ID name, total credits. And the second part contains the name of all the attributes of the entity sets. The next is diamond that represents the relationship sets. That is what is the relationship between these. So this is a diamond shape. Then undivided rectangle that represents the attributes of a relationship set. An attribute that are a part of the primary key are also underlined. That is the ID is the primary key in case of the instructor as well as the ID is the primary key in case of the student. Then lines that are linked to that relationship set, for example, instructor is linked to the advisor, advisor is linked to the student. Then dash lines that link the attributes of a relationship set to the relationship set. For example, if I want to represent the entity with the attribute that is represented by the dotted line or the dash line. Then double line that indicate the total participation of an entity in a relationship set. What is the total relationship that is available in the entity set? Then double diamond, that means double diamond, there, there are the double lines over here, that represents or identifying the relationship set linked to the weak, weak entity set. What is the weak entity set? How it is established, how to identify the relationship, how to use the relationship between the entity sets. Uh, then what are the various considerations, that is the two entity set, that is the sector and the student, that is related to the binary relationship, that is the advisor. Then the attribute associated with the instructor are the ID, name, salary, and whatever the attribute that is associated with the student are the ID, name, and the total credit. That represents or that attributes entity set that are the members of the primary key that are the underlying. And if a relationship set has some attribute that is associated with it, then we enclose the attributes in a rectangle and link the rectangle with a dashed line to the diamond representing the that relationship that set. So we have the date descriptive attributes attached to the relationship set advisor to specify the date on which an instructor becomes advisor. Now this is the date, this is the advisor. There is the relationship between these two entities set that is represented by the dotted line. This ER diagram with an attribute attached to the relationship set. Now this is the instructor, then advisor, student ID name, salary advisor ID name, credits. Then instructor, student, ID name, salary, ID name, total credit as well. Then instructor, student, ID name, salary, ID name, total credit. So this is the relationship that is a one to one. Then one to many, then many to many. So many instructors, many students. One instructor, one student. One instructor, many students. The next is mapping the cardinality. How to map the cardinality? So the relationship set advisor between the instructor and the student entity sets may be one to one, one to one and many to one or many to many and to differentiate between these we draw either a directed line or an undirected line that is between the relationship set and the entity set in a question 
So first is a one to one. So we draw a directed line from the relationship state advisor to both the entity states, instructor and the student. Uh, this indicates that an instructor may advise at most one student and that a student may have at most one advisor. That means one instructor, one student. One instructor, one instructor. One instructor, one student. One student, one instructor. That means there is a one-to-one -one relationship. Then one to many, so we draw a directed line from the relationship set advisor to the entity set instructor and an undirected line to the entity set student. This indicates that an instructor may advise many students, but a student may have at most one advisor. This is the one to many, that is the advisor with the instructor with the undirected line to get the entities. Then many to one. So we draw an undirected line from the relationship set advisor to the entity set instructor and directed line to the entity set student. This indicates that an instructor may advise at most one student, but a student may have many advisors. Then many to many. So we draw an undirected line from the relationship set advisor to both the entity set instructor and the student. That indicates that an instructor may advise many students and a student may have many advisors. That means many to many relationship, many student many advisors, many student, many advisors, many instructor, many student. There is a many to many relationship. And this ER model or diagram also provides a way to indicate more complex constraints on the number of time each entity participates in a relationship in a relationship set. And a line may have an associated minimum and the maximum cardinality that is shown over here, where the L is a minimum and the H is a maximum. And a minimum value of the one indicates total participation of the entity set in the relationship set. That is, each entity in the entity set occurs at least one relationship in that particular relationship set. And a maximum value of one indicates that the entity participate in at most one relationship, while a maximum value asterisk indicates no limit. So, for example, when you talk about the line advisor student that has a cardinality constraint of 1, 1, meaning that the minimum and the maximum cardinality are the both. That is, each student must have exactly one advisor. And the limit zero on the line between the advisor that is represent that an instructor can have zero or more students. That means one student, two students, zero student or the most students. And it is also easy to misinterpret the zero on the left edge and the thing that the relationship advisor is many to one from the instructor to the student. That is exactly the reverse of the correct interpretation. And the ER model could alternately be withdrawn with a double line from the student to the advisor and an arrow on the line from the advisor to the instructor. That is shown in the cardinality also and this alternative diagram would enforce exactly the same constraint that we followed in the last class that is in the yesterday's class. Now what is the meaning of the complex attributes? That may be a name, that may be a component attribute, that may be a first name, that may be a middle initial last name that replaces the simple attribute name of the instructor. And as an another example, suppose we were add to or we were to add an address to the instructor entity sets. The address can be defined as a composite set composite attribute that means address with the attributes now address may be contains multiple elements that may be a street number that may be a road number that may be a street name that may be apartment name that may be a city that may be a state that may be a zip code this is the diagram that shows about the instructors one is the id the name name includes first name middle name last name address that includes street and street includes street number name and the apartment name then after the street next part of the address is city next part is state next part is zip Next part is phone number. Phone number is the next part of the yes address. Then date of birth and age. This includes a composite, multi-value, and the derived attributes. And the attribute street is itself a composite attribute whose component attributes are street number, street name, apartment name. The next is the roles that includes or shows the role indicator, course ID, prerequisite ID between the course entity sets and the prerequisite entity set. The next is non-binary relationship set that can be specified easily in an ER diagram that consists of the three entity sets, instructor, student, project that is related through the relationship set project guide. So this is the prerequisite. 
this is the course then course id title credits course id prerequisite id and this is the ear diagram with a ternary relationship ternary means three relationships yes binary means two unary means one The next is the weak entity set. So consider a section entity which is uniquely identified by a course identifier, semester year, section identifier. That section entities are related to the course entities. Suppose we created a relationship set section course between the entity set section and the course. So now we observe that the information in the section course is redundant and since the section already has an attribute course ID. So one option is to deal with this duplication is to get rid of the relationship section course. However, by doing so, uh, there is a relationship that is created that is implicit in that attribute that is not desirable, that is not the strong entity, that is always the weak entity. Next alternative to deal with the duplication is not to store the attributes as a in a section ID and only to store the remaining attributes section ID, EN and the semester. However, the entity set section that uh, goes does not have enough attributes to identify a particular section. Although each section entity is distinct section for the different courses that may share the same section ID year and the semester. And to deal with such problems, we treat the relationship as a special relationship that provides extra information in this case a course ID that is required to identify the section entity uniquely. Now, the notion of a weak entity that also formalizes the about intuition. So entity said that does not have a, a sufficient attributes that is known as the weak entity. And entity said that have a primary key is known as the strong entity set. So any entity that have a primary key that is a strong entity, any uh, entity that does not have a special keys or the primary key that, that does not have a specialized attribute that is known as this weak entity. And for a weak entity to be meaningful, it must be associated with the another entity set known as the identifying or the owner entity sets. And each weak entity must be associated with an identifying event that is a weak entity set is said to be the existence dependence on the identifying entity set. That is said to the, own the weak entity set that it identifies. And in our example, the identifying entity set for the section is course and the relationship section course which associates the section that entities with the corresponding course entity that is the identifying relationship. Now when we talk about the primary key of a weak entity set that is formed by the primary key of the identifying entity sets plus the weak entity set discriminators. For example in the case of the entity set that is the section its primary key course ID section ID ESMS where the course ID is the primary key of the identifying entity sets that differentiate the section entity from the or for the same course. Note that we could have chosen to make section ID globally unique across all the courses that is offered in the university in case the section ID set would have a uh, primary key. So one is a course, one is a section, course ID that is a unique for a course entity, then title credits. In the same way there is a section ID, semester and the year. Now in year diagrams, whenever we are represented uh, the weak entity set that is depicted by a rectangle, like a strong entity set, but there are two differences. Weak entity is always represented with a dotted line or the dashed line, rather than a solid line. In the same way, the relationship set connecting the weak entity set to the identifying strong entity set is also depicted by the double diamond. Now this is the double diamond, so this identifying the strong entity set. Now this is an example for the year diagram for the university example. This, that is the same. One entity is department. One, one relationship is a course department. Then student department, institute, instructor department, advisor, teachers, takes. That is a relationship. Then uh, reduction of the relational schemas. Uh, that is, uh, this is a diagram that shows how the department 
instructor student sections course time slot these are the five entities how they are related with each other what is the relationship among these are uh, among each other and what is the attribute that is used over here so there are three three attributes i think yeah there are three, three attributes at most for each and every entity and there are relationship also for example in the instructor and the student there is a advisor relationship in the department and the instructor there is an instructor department relationship in the department and the student there is the student department relationship in the instructor and the section there is the teachers re relationship in the same way student and the section there is a takes relation because student takes a section okay all right so just wait for two minutes so any doubts anyone till here the entity may be a weak entity that may be a strong entity that depends on the attributes it have that depends on the primary key it have but although the basic er concepts that model with the yeah that can be model with the database features now next topic is yeah any other doubts anyone so the next topic is extended er features extended means uh, enhanced er features so although the basic EN models or concepts can model most database features, some aspects of our database may be more aptly expressed by the certain extensions to the basic EN model. In this section, we discuss extended EN feature of the specialization, generalization, higher and the lower level entity sets, attribute inheritance, and the aggregation. And to help out with the discussion, we shall use a slightly more elaborate database schema for the university. And in particular, we shall model the various people within the university by defining an entity set person with attributes ID, name, and address. So first part is a specialization. That includes what are the various entities that is a sub subgrouping of the entities that are distinct in some way from the other entities in the set. For example, when you say about the subset of the entity, that means group of the entities that have some attributes that are not shared by all the entities in the entity set. Then the ER model also provides a means for representing these distinct um, or distinctive entity groups. As an example, as an example, the entity set person may further classified as one of the following: one is employee, one is a student. And each of these persons types is described by the set of the attribute that includes all the attributes of entity set person plus possibly the additional attributes. For example, when you say about the employee, that may contain the entity that may be a salary where the student may contain the entity that may be total credits. So process of designing or designating the subgrouping within entity set is known as a specialization. So this allows us to differentiate, distinguish between the among the person entities according to whether they correspond to employees or students. In general, a person could be an employee, a student or both or neither. That may be an employee, that may be a student, that may be not the employee, not the student, or maybe the both employee and the student. Now, taking out the same example, that is an university example that shows how the student should be divided into two categories. One is the graduate, one is the undergraduate. And each of the student types is described by a set of the attributes that includes all the attributes of the entity set student plus the additional attributes. And this, this would create two specialization of the student, namely the graduate and the undergraduate. And as we saw earlier, student entities are also described by the attributes that is ID, name, and the total credits. So that will include the graduate, that includes have attributes where the additional attributes of his number. And this set undergraduate would have all the attributes of a student and an additional attribute that is a specialization for to ref de de uh, refine a design. For example, when you say about the university employee that may be further classified is, as one of the following. One is the instructor, one is the secretary. So each of these employee types is described by the set of the attributes that includes all the attributes of entity set employee plus the additional attributes. In the same way, instructor entities may be described further by the attributes rank, while the secretary entities are described by the attributes hours per week. And furthermore, secretary entities also participate in a relationship secretary for between the secretary and the employee entity set that identifies the employees which are assisted by the secretary. So there are two parts in the employee, that is the permanent employee 
or the temporary embryo and more than the resulting entity you may say that is one of the entities right that a particular entity may belong to the multiple specializations and in terms of the ER diagram specialization is depicted by the hollow head pointing from the specialized entity to the other entities also this is known as overlapping specialization disjoint specialization superclass subclass relationship One is a generalization to the, that refining from the initial entity set into the successive levels of the entity subgroups. A subgrouping represents a top-down design approach in which the distinctions are made explicit. And the design process may also proceed in a bottom-up manner in which the multiple entity sets are synthesized into the high-level entity sets on the basis of common features that are first identified with the instructor entity set with the attribute instructor ID, instructor name, instructor salary and the the secretary entity set with attributes secretary ID, secretary name, secretary salary and the R's per week.